This video is brought to you by InDesign to Affinity Publisher by Markswear. Hi, I'm Erica Gamet, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I go about putting multiple instances of a layout on a page for print. Here I'm working with a business card, and when I'm first doing a layout, I do a single card in my document. I do a one-up layout. Then when it goes to print, I want to take multiples of this and put it on a page. But when I'm starting out, I need to know the individual page setup for each individual card. So it's just easier to start this way. If I look at my document setup, I can see that I have the page size set to the actual trim size of the card. In the US, a business card is three and a half inches by two inches. I've also got a margin of a quarter of an inch and a bleed of an eighth of an inch all the way around. And here I can turn on my normal view so I can see that I have these items bleeding off to the side. I can also click down here and hold and see just my bleed preview so I can make sure that everything is actually hitting to the edge of the bleed. Now I'm ready to set the final card up for print. I'm going to create a separate document for that. And it comes in handy if I'm making several cards with different names, etc., because I can make them all here. Then I place them in groups that make sense for my layout for print. So let's jump over to that print document. I have it set up as I need with all these crop marks and guides. And I can see that I have double crop marks here. And that's because I have a bleed and I have to make sure that I leave enough room to bleed that card on all sides. So this item down the middle is the gutter, and that's where I accommodate everything. That space actually gives me a little bit of wiggle room for any bounce that might happen in uh, the copier, on a press, on the cutter, whatever. And as a side note, if you don't want to make these every time, you actually can create a library of these items that you can use over and over again. So I actually have this in a library. And if I were to create a new document, and I wanted these same crops, I can go ahead and select this item and place that item on the page. And now I have all those crops and guides ready for me. So we'll jump back to this page that I have set up here, and we're ready to use one of my favorite tricks, which is placing an InDesign file inside another InDesign file. That way it acts like an image, so it's all in one piece, and you can easily update the original, like if someone's title or phone number changes. In fact, if we go back and look at this one up business card, I can also see that this item here is actually an InDesign file. So I've just placed this item inside this InDesign file, and then we're going to take this InDesign file and place it inside this InDesign file. So let's go ahead and place that. We'll do File, Place, and I'm going to choose my 1UP. And I want to make sure that I have Show Import Options turned on, especially if I'm using a multiple page document, because I need to choose which page I need to import. In this case, I'm importing page 1. But I also want to make sure that I come over here and tell it to crop to the bleed bounding box. I want it to include that entire bleed, of course. So I'll say OK to that. And I'm just going to click so it automatically places it at 100%. Now I have a couple different options when I'm working here. I could use my guides, except that my guides are set for the cut and I have the bleed. So I have to sort of make sure this sits right in the middle. I also know that it needs to sit at half an inch from the left and one inch down. I could also set this at the zero point if that makes it easier, and then step and repeat it and move it into place. In this case, I know where it needs to sit. So I'm going to go ahead and step and repeat that. I just did Command or Control plus Option or Alt plus U to bring up the step and repeat. I want to repeat it three times, and I want to repeat that vertically at two and a quarter inches, which I can see over here is the height, and horizontally at zero. And that looks good. It looks like it hits the same place every time. We'll say OK. Then I'm going to select all the items that are here. Step and repeat again, only this time vertically at zero and horizontally at three and three quarters. Again, it's three and a half inches plus the extra gutter in between. Got to do a little bit of math. We'll say OK. And now I can see that everything is set where I expect it to. And I can see how this fills the gutter in between. And that gives me that little bit of wiggle room in case anything bounces. I'm going to go to this page and I'm going to place the second page in that document. Do file, place. Choose that same item. I'm going to choose page two. And I'm going to go ahead and place that in the same way. Now I'm just going to drag down one extra copy. We're not going to do all the step and repeat. Because what I want to show you is that in this gutter, I can see that this is a continuous tone. There's no actual need for that extra gutter. And by getting rid of it, I can squeeze in two extra cards onto the page. And I'll have far fewer cuts, which at a print shop will actually cost you less. So let's look at the page I would set that up on. Let's go to this last page. 
And here I've gotten rid of the gutter. There's no gutter in between, and you can see I have 10 on a page as opposed to the 8 I had before. So I'm going to place that document again. Make sure I'm placing page 2. And I'm going to choose Page Bounding Box. I don't need that bleed because the bleed is the same throughout. So I'll say OK. I'll place that. Now, of course, it fits nicely in here. I'm going to step and repeat that. I'm going to do it four times vertically at two inches, which is the size of the entire card, and say OK. And then I'm going to step and repeat horizontally at three and a half inches. Lastly, when it comes time to updating the original artwork, it's pretty easy. We just go back to the single page layout. Let's select this text here. Let's change the color. Change it to red there. We'll say save. Go back to our layout. We can see that we're missing all of these links. I can just double click on that and it updates it to that red all throughout. So the nice thing is I can go ahead and make changes to the original and it updates in the multiple up document. Well, I hope you found this tip helpful. For thousands more InDesign articles and tutorials, be sure to check out InDesignSecrets.com. There you can sign up for our free InDesign Tip of the Week. Thanks for learning with us.